everybody. Welcome to Spotlight on Middle Country. My name is Lenore Paprocki, and I am the president of the Greater Middle Country Chamber of Commerce. And my name is Elizabeth Malafi. I'm the coordinator of the Miller Business Center. And we're here today with Spotlight on Middle Country. This is a collaboration between the Middle Country Chamber and the Miller Business Center and the teams. We sit together and we talk to um, our members, our community people, uh, some special events. We learn a little bit about who's in our community and what's happening in our community. And today I am very, very happy to introduce to you all Roberta Rosenberg, who is the um, owner of this destination accessible. Am I right by saying owner? No, we're a, we're a nonprofit. We're a 501c3. No. Very good. Yes, I know you were, I knew you were not from nonprofit, so nonprofit. So, so Roberta, can you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and and how you got involved with um, destination accessible? Sure, happy to. So, I spent the major portion of my life, 40 years as a teacher, had a wonderful career, and then was time to retire. And at that point in time, I, I wouldn't say I was looking for something to do, but I always knew that I wanted to do something afterwards. And so I'll, I'll go back to my mom. My mom, uh, who passed away in 2005, had polio as a child and always had walking problems, back problems, was in a wheelchair for the last several years of her life. And we would go places and we would do things. And it was always a struggle. It was a struggle to get information. It was a struggle to go places that were not accessible. And there was, you would call up and there was not a lot of information for anything. And so we just winged it. And my mom passed away and moved on. And after I retired, um, 20, that was 2011. Um, shortly after that, I had a bizarre accident and spent six months in a wheelchair and another six months with a walker and a cane learning to walk again. And at that time, I was, that was, you know, at least like 2012, 2013, uh, noticing more and more how difficult it was for wheelchairs and for getting around and for just, just, it was a hassle. But I didn't think about it too much because happily I knew I was getting out of that situation. Mm -hmm. And so I got out of the wheelchair and, you know, moved on, but this was always in the back of my mind. Then my father who uh, passed away at the age of 99, but was mm -hmm. always wanted to go out every day, museums, theaters, restaurants, whatever. And so I would, we would go, but I, at that point, Google was around. It wasn't that long ago. It was only three years ago. And I was looking for information before we would go out to find out how accessible was a place? How easy was it going to be for me to take him in his wheelchair? Was there a single occupancy restroom? Because what would happen was we would go someplace. And although my husband had no problem pushing me into the ladies room to the handicap accessible stall, I was rather uncomfortable pushing my father into the men's room. And so we'd wind up waiting outside the men's room for some nice guy, young guy to come along and offer to help us, which happened, but didn't make me very happy. So after an extended visit with my father and lots and lots of aggravation about calling places, not getting the right information, not finding information online, I finally said to my husband one day, I have to do something about this. This is, this is not right. You go online, you go to Yelp or Google or to uh, TripAdvisor, and it'll give you a little blurb that says, we are handicap accessible. But that's not, that's not factual. It's crowdsourced. And who knows if that's true or not. And I can tell you from personal experience that there are enough places that don't have correct information or any information to make that so. So I decided that I was going to remedy this situation. And I said, well, what's the best way to do it? A website that would give people the information. A website that would not, not really offer reviews or stars, not three stars, four stars, five stars, or as my kids wanted to say, we should put little wheelchairs there. <laughs> uh, well, we, we chose not to do that. We decided that there are so many you know, variables in what people need. Someone with a cane or a walker has really different needs than someone with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and someone with a baby carriage. And so we, my, my, I, I enlisted my best friend at the time and the two of us spent almost a year figuring out what would be the best way, what would be the best information we could offer, what would be the best way we could offer it. And we did a lot of research. We did our own logo. We did our own website. Our two sons, thank God, helped us do it. And we put a whole bunch of venues on our website. We decided what we wanted to look for also. And we devised a checklist, which is on our website. Anybody can see. And we put it out there thinking, okay, you know, like people will just use it. But we were both, we are both uh, very non-business savvy. And so the trials and tribulations of trying to get this out there have been quite interesting. Well, but it, our goal is to have a free venue, a free website that anybody can access and f- know before they go what they're going to find at a fun place. We do, you know, there you have to go to so many places that you have no choice but to go to. But if you're going out for fun, everybody deserves to have a good time. Most of us, when we're going out, you know, you're going to a restaurant. What are you looking for? You know, how crowded is it? Can I get a reservation? What's the food like? How costly is it? Those are things that most of us think about. But most of us don't have to think about, can I get into the wheelchair? Are there, uh, can I get into the restroom? Are there steps to get to that restroom? How crowded will it be in the, in the seating before COVID um, to, get my, to get a wheelchair pass? When I was in a wheelchair, we used to get really unpleasant looks from people who had to move their chairs like two inches so that the wheelchair could pass. So our goal is not to tell anybody where to go because there are, there are venues on our website that are not like, you know, so accessible. But our goal is to tell you exactly what you're going to find there in terms of how many handicapped parking spaces, where they are, what's the, what's the parking lot like? Is it paved? Is it gravel? Uh, where's the handicapped entrance? Are there steps? Are there ramps? Are there elevators? Once you get inside, how easy is it to get around? Some venues have thick carpeting inside. Yeah, it's interesting because it's it's all things I never thought of until I met Roberta. Um, I'm sure all of these places at least do the bare minimum they have to to pass ADA compliance. You know, they they have the three feet wide in a perfect moment. Um, but when I first talked to Roberta and she's like, well, people don't think if it's a gravel parking lot and you have a cane, that's very hard to walk on. Or if the steps are made of stone and you have to put your cane and it goes in between stones, that can be very difficult. So it's so yeah. interesting. And we've had discussions about, you know, how to promote this business. And even, and you mentioned um, when talking about the business was about uh, parents with strollers. So even just moving strollers, it doesn't have to be somebody that might have a mobility issue, but just moving strollers. So tell me, um, you know, we met through the Miller Center, you're part of our Chamber of Commerce. What made you decide to uh, join Chambers of Commerce and start meeting other businesses? Do you see do you see the business community as a way to um, grow your reach with Destination Accessible? Well, let, let me just say, I love the Miller Center. I think what you, do, what you guys Thank did you. is incredible. And not only do you do all of that stuff, but everybody there is so lovely. And Thank you. Just, so I can't, you know, if I could give you like 10 stars, I really would. <laughs> Roberta <laughs> always makes us feel good. She sends us lovely messages after programs when she <laughs> likes them. You deserve them. Everything Thank you. you do is such high quality and done in, you know, what I consider to be easily understandable, you know, wording that I, who have no background in anything. I mean, this is like so <laughs> far removed from teaching. <laughs> that, you know, it, it's just amazing that, so I love you guys. Thank you. The, the, and, you know, anything that I could do to support you, I'm there. Appreciate uh, for that. that. And for Lenore and the greater country, middle country chamber, I think that that chamber is probably, 
I haven't been to that many, but of all the ones that I have been to, they are the most welcoming, the loveliest group ever. And before, Thank you. before I joined them, even, even not being a member, they were always welcoming. They were always, nobody ever made me feel unwelcome, unwanted. I have been to chambers that have been less than pleasant. Wow. Um, and That's I sad have to been, hear. Um, well, but, but it's true because, <laughs> because we are a nonprofit with, I'll say, next to no money. For, for me to spend any money, I'm really so careful about where I spend it. And many of them have said to my face, unless you're a member, we will not support you. No. You can't come, you can't come and do a presentation. You can't come and, you know, even, even if what you're doing is, uh, is not money making, because I feel, I feel like we're not selling something. Yeah, yeah, we are selling something. We're selling our information, but it's free. And, right. and our goal is to help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And even if you are a person who, who thinks, I don't need that. And I've had people, it, it, when we still had, you know, the fairs and, and the expos, people come over and say, oh, it's really interesting, but I don't need that. I don't know anybody who needs that. The truth is you probably do know somebody that needs that because more than 20% of the population has a physical disability of some sort. And the vast majority of those are mobility issues. Right. So you probably do know someone, but the other part is you could need this tomorrow. Your life could change in a flash and you may not need it today, but at least have it in the back of your mind or check it out so that if and when you do need it, you know that it's out there for you. Right. And so, you might know somebody who, who needs it. Like the chances are, if you think about it, you do know somebody who needs it. Mm -hmm. and, and on the business side, Roberta, I look at it. I remember when I first met you, I looked at it as, you know, my business, what whoever it might have, might have been that I was representing at the time needed to be on your website because to me it was another check in the box of a business that is socially um reachable for lack of any other word you know they were doing the right thing they were you know they were they're worried about every customer not just a particular mm -hmm. customer yeah going client. beyond so going beyond right exactly so to me on a business level it made a lot of sense um for companies and businesses to want to be a part of and be listed in um, Destination Accessible. Because of that, I saw that as being um, a big positive. Um, and and uh, which is, you know, of course, you know, everybody does things self-serving. That's why I reached out and said, come on, Roberta, I got places for you to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. But I, I, I have to tell you, and this is pre-COVID, um, the number of restaurants who said to us, why would I want to advertise or have people know about that? Why would I want that population? I'm not interested in that population. Really? They don't they have any it, money? People, <laughs> people said it to it's our face. Terrible. And, or why would I want to put in a baby changing station? I don't want kids here. That's, now, that's ridiculous. I have to hope that, you know, post COVID people will think differently. Right. But the truth is that many people that we have come in contact with they don't do want not it not care yeah and that makes me i have to say that not only did it hurt me personally because i'm very thin skinned but i feel sad for those people to have that you know that attitude right that, that not thinking about that but yeah we move yeah, on and and you know from from a business point of view well we are a nonprofit, and we'd love to you know um, have this businesses, you know, invite us and we'd love to, we, we need to have sponsors and, you know, donors and things like that um, to keep, to keep us going. Yeah. Right. And, you know, so and, tell us and, a little bit about your sponsors. Like, so how do you go? I mean, obviously that's one of the reasons why you joined the chamber, but um, you know, who do you actually um, go after as far as sponsorships and, and that sort of thing to keep that? Cause I, obviously there's an, a cost to keeping the website up to date and, and uh, ex, you know, and, and being able to be easily found. And, you know, we all know about how, uh, you know, website um, development and um, even hosting is, can be expensive. So what do you do? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not good at it, uh, I have to say. <laughs> I'm not good at asking for money. And so our sponsors have so far been, and they're, they're very few, uh, people who, um, a physical therapy, occupational therapy business, you know, which is a great sponsor for us and a great partner sure. for us. Um, Able Newspaper, which is an amazing newspaper for anybody that doesn't yeah. know them, for anybody with a disability, mm -hmm. has been very kind to us. And a few other organizations, Sea Star Strategy, which is not you know not necessarily connected, but is great a great helper. So yes. we're you know we're happy to have anybody who wants to help us make a difference mm -hmm. in in lives of you know to to our goal is to enrich the quality of life for anybody with a mobility challenge, right? And you know hoping to to expand it. But at the moment, we can't possibly do that. We could barely do what we're doing. And yeah. how, how have things been, you know, since the uh, change with COVID? Well, that's, yeah, that's been interesting, because for the first, I don't know how many months we were in with everybody. Mm -hmm. And during that time, um, I was busy thinking about, you know, so what's going to happen when when we reopen and what's going to happen for for everybody, not just for people with disabilities. And so my focus has been on, we've written some articles about uh, when things started reopening, about what would make you feel safe when you're going to a restaurant or to out to a venue, what would make you feel safe, uh, just what, what should businesses do to make their patrons feel safe. Um, what's my latest article? We did an article on the ADA because it was the 30th anniversary of the ADA and where the ADA, you know, mm -hmm. started and has, and has come to, and I'm just about to engage in a blog to oh, try and, you know, give, give more, really offer people more information. So we put our Facebook page has usually has one or maybe well probably one venue a week that we spotlight that we've mm -hmm. visited and we have been going to outdoor dining um so outdoor dining i'm personally i'm not ready to do indoor dining but outdoor dining and i'm i'm willing to go into the venue to see how it's looking inside and about the bathrooms and what they're doing mm -hmm. and so giving people some idea of you know, what, what you can look forward to. What's, what is, what is, I mean, nobody really knows what's safe and everybody mm -hmm. has to make their own decision. Mm -hmm. But I think things that, that businesses can do to make their people feel safe. And, and I would say the two tips that I would offer to businesses that I have seen personally are businesses that have information a lot more information that business offers on their website or on their facebook page about what they are doing to make their patrons their customers anybody visiting them feel safe the better that place has been when i've gotten there and that's, so you that's know, great advice yeah that's and, wonderful and, and the other thing is well two other things the other thing is many places don't have enough hand sanitizer just readily available Mm. or hand sanitizer that's not empty. Right. It is really frustrating to go someplace and there's a big hand sanitizer station. <laughs> empty. Yes, yes. Right. So I feel like if it's there, just there, you know, you can use it. It's not a big deal now that it's readily available. Yeah, I think is. that's an easy thing that a, a business could do. Any business, you know, a store, sure. it doesn't have to be a restaurant, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the places we deal with, but any place. And the third thing I would say is, if you go someplace and it looks the same as it looked before COVID, you don't really want to be there. You really need to think twice about frequenting a business the establishment that looks the same as it looked before COVID. Mm -hmm. So those, you know, so, so we yeah. have been we have been going out. We've great. spent we've spent as much time as possible on parks. We have a lot of great parks here on Long Island that we have written about. And even for people that are not disabled, on our on our website there is um, a checklist of the things that we look at. There is a brief description, which is kind of the checklist in paragraph form. And then we have it's our really our blog, which we call our Read More, and mm -hmm. it gives our experience on the exact day that we visited, 
And even if you're not disabled, it really tends to give a flavor of the restaurant or the, or the park or the venue or interesting things about it that I think most people, you know, I don't know, might not, you might not Google to find out, you know, um, how did ComSet get its name? Or, you know, how, how uh, the Vanderbilt, you know, what happened there? Or, oh, the Vanderbilt Planetarium has two eagles at the entrance that came from Grand Central Station. Yeah. Wow. So it's, you're learning a lot. You're That's learning great. A lot. I have learned a ton <laughs> about Long Island. That's I great. have to say, and, um, and I've lived here for 45 years and I never learned so much as I have going to a lot of places that I went to when my kids were little and hadn't yeah. been back to. Um, and we go to these places and we have a great time. I, I, I love this, but I like the idea when someone sends me a, an email and says, you know, it was really nice what you wrote because my friend who is in a wheelchair always wears some sort of a depend when they go someplace because they don't know how the restroom is going to be. Wow. <laughs> Well, that's thank pretty, you. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's great. That's you know, what great. I learned from you today, Roberta, is, is that destination accessible ha is not just about having a handicap. It's a great resource for people who are when whoever they are going someplace first because you're writing a mini review and that actually yeah. should be your marketing point. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. not just about handicap people. It's about anybody, you know. Thank I, I you. Never Thank you that. so much. Thank you so much for your time today, Roberta. I think we'll definitely put a link to your website in our description. Yes. We encourage everybody to take a look at Destination Accessible, whether you have a mobility issue or not. Um, as Roberta said, if you are a mother or a parent who is going to be pushing children in a in a stroller. Uh, personally, I don't, I mean, pre COVID, I did not like crowded restaurants. So this would be great for something like that. Um, we encourage you to take a look at it. I think Roberta has one more thing to say, and then we're going to sign off. I, I just wanted to say, so we do have kid friendly venues on, on the website. Awesome. Also, Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. there you go, parents. Even, yeah. Even if your kid is, you know, even if, if you're, family is not perhaps you have a grandparent or a parent or somebody who's going who is so oh, yeah. a lot of parents or aunts like me okay <laughs> <laughs> so you thank you again roberta it was so great having you on. It was very, very interesting. And uh, I highly encourage everybody to visit um, the website, which we uh, we will share for Destination Accessible. And if you have any questions, Roberta, um, how do people reach out to you directly? Um, on our website is our, you can find our, there's a, an info box on the website okay. and our, um, our email is on the website and our phone number is on the website. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye, Love everybody. Having you with us. Thank you so much. It was great to hear from you. Elizabeth, thank you again for hosting with me. It's always a pleasure to have you always on. Always a pleasure. I like it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Roberta, Thanks, everybody. thank you again. And um, everybody, have a great day. And we'll see you next time on Spotlight on Middle Country. Bye-bye, everybody.